Nobody is ready to say the war on terror is over. The question is, how do you begin to grapple with this issue? How do you know when it's time to sort of start really winding it down? Welcome to News Beast. Happy Monday, if you can call it that. We have Dan Kleidman in the house. How are you, sir? I'm well, thanks. Great new cover story in Newsweek uh, on Zero Dark Thirty, the new OBL film. Um, how Zero Dark Thirty predicts the future. But, but Dan, this really this piece is fascinating because while it uses the movie as a, as a taking off point, it raises profound questions about when and how will this war end. And you go behind the scenes, as you do so well in your reporting, uh, and tell the story of Pentagon General Counsel uh, Jay Johnson, J-E-H is how it's spelled, and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and, and uh, his, inner, uh, his sort of conversations with the White House about raising this question and saying that people are thinking about it, but no one has an answer. Yeah, well, it's, it's understandable why no one has an answer. This is a, uh, uh, an unconventional war. Everyone's heard the cliche that uh, this war is not going to end on the deck of a battleship mm. or two generals shaking ha hands in a tent in the desert. Uh, how do you uh, end uh, the war on terror, um, and, and, and how do you know that it's ended? And that's the really difficult question for people in the administration. Um, but there is a, a kind of growing sense um, that uh, you can't just fight this war uh, forever in the way that we've been fighting it, that is, in a kind of traditional military way. And I think this is very much on the mind of, uh, of President Obama, who's been concerned about the idea of, you know, the sort of forever war. Uh, we've already uh, sort of uh, pushed the, the, the limits of the law in some way. We're, we're stretching, dwindling budgets. Um, and, you know, the question becomes, look, Al-Qaeda core, the main organization, has been pretty much decimated. Osama bin Laden is dead. They've not been able to pull off an attack really in years. Um, you knock do on have wood, these, yes. knock on wood, you do have these affiliate groups in, in Yemen and Somalia, and you have new splinter organizations popping up uh, in the turmoil of the Arab Spring. But, but loosely long, affiliated at best. Loosely yes. affiliated. These are offshoots of offshoots in mm -hmm. many ways. Um, and you know, uh, one of the people I interviewed, a military planner uh, in, the, uh, in the Pentagon, said to me, you know, do you fire off drones and do you send in the spe special ops forces every time some group raises the black banner of al-Qaeda, but has a, a very uh, attenuated connection to 9-11 or to al-Qaeda itself? And those are tough questions. Look, nobody is ready to say the war on terror is over. The question is, how do you begin to grapple with this issue? How do you know when it's time to sort of start really winding it down? Or as one uh, White House official put it to me, how do we know when it's time to end the state of emergency? And, and, and you put it, I think, particularly well in this article, too, which is, it, you know, immediately after 9-11, people were criticized for having a pre-9-11 mindset. But maybe now it's time to criticize too much of a post-9-11 mindset. Uh, and, and it really does raise the opportunities of a second term, puts them in really sharp relief that to some extent Obama's first term necessarily, you are, you are picking up problems you inherit from the next guy, or just the continuum of history. But now in a second term there's an opportunity for fundamental reassessing. So yeah, that, that, that's questions. exactly right. It, it really does begin to affect how policy decisions are made. Um, symbolically, you mentioned Jay Johnson. This was a kind of important, I think, inflection point in, in uh, uh, in the war on terror. Jay Johnson, general counsel of the Pentagon, uh, went out uh, at the Oxford uh, Union, the fabled debating society Odd at Oxford location University. For that well, uh, for sure. you know, uh, perhaps he did it there because it was uh, a few thousand miles away from Washington. Maybe he thought it would be a little bit less controversial to do it there. In any event, he raises this question with the full backing of, uh, of, the, uh, of the administration. One week after 9-11, our Congress authorized our president to, quote, use all necessary and appropriate force, end quote, against those nations, organizations, and individuals responsible for 9-11. President Obama, like President Bush before him, as Commander-in-Chief of our armed forces, has acted militarily based on that authorization. And in fact, um, that speech was uh, worked through with John Brennan, the President's Chief uh, Counterterrorism Advisor, uh, which suggests that this is something that the President himself wanted Jay Johnson to, to do. Um, you can't end the war on terror uh, overnight. Uh, this is a long, gradual process. But things, there's some really intriguing things uh, that we're beginning to see in terms of winding down the war, ending that state of emergency. I think um, chief among them is that John Brennan, um, has been working on something uh, that, that uh, he calls the playbook, which is an effort to kind yeah. of codify and institutionalize the sort of rules of the road 
the war for uh, targeted killings, which, as everyone knows, has been in some ways the most controversial aspect of this, of this war. What he's really talking about is looking for ways to rein in uh, uh, the CIA and to uh, exercise more supervision uh, over the CIA and how it runs that program. That is a first step uh, toward moving beyond the kind of military approaches uh, that we've had in this war. And ultimately, he'd like to shift away responsibility for those kinds of lethal operations away from the CIA over to the military. But there are other ways this is expressing itself as well. There was a big debate uh, over the summer as to whether um, we should go in militarily in Mali, where you now have mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. uh, an, an Al Qaeda affiliate. Drone strikes in Mali. Well, the president, John Brennan, decided we're not doing that. And I think that's also a kind of an important inflection point. It's fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. It's a fascinating article. Um, and it really is uh, raises serious questions about the second term and the opportunities as well. Stan Clyden, thanks for writing us. Thanks. And uh, thanks for coming to News Beast. Absolutely. We will see you tomorrow, Tuesday.